lastly, one of the other big storylines I want to get into because you're an offensive coach, you came up through Urban Meyer, you designed the offense with Bowling Green, Utah, and to Florida, and just around your career. I find it interesting that Jimbo Fisher, head coach, Texas A&M, brought in Bobby Petrino, another fiery offensive guy, to be his offensive coordinator. What I found telling is yesterday at SC Media Days, he wouldn't really commit to, you know, Bobby calling a game. You know, I hope that he will. He just, he didn't come out and say it. I mean, what what's the point of that? I don't know. I think it's really interesting because I think, uh, you know, I'm a big um, schematics fan of Bobby Petrino. And yeah. we're, I mean, com- you talk about coming from complete different spectrums of, but I think as a coach, you really respect ways to do it. And you have your system, you know, and, and when I look at Bobby's system, I think, boy, he, he has a great offensive system, very successful. Again, he has the answers to problems knows how to scheme within his system, and the guy's performing at the high level. Um, I think Jimbo, in a lot of ways, has had a great system, but people have gotten on him about his ability to mix and match the system to the personnel he has. And I think if, if there's one thing that you have to understand as a coach is your system has to be big enough to sway with the personnel that you have. It can't be rigid. You know, you have to look and say, it's going to be a big test, like Nick Saban's offense this year. I can't wait to see it because they went from a guy that was going to stand in the pocket as an unbelievable pocket down the field thrower yep. to, having, to having running quarterbacks. Right. Doesn't mean they're going to blow up the system. It means they have to sway a little bit over this way to, to highlight the strengths of the players. And I thought Bobby has it. Now, the, the key is going to be the merge. Right. Of the best offenses I was probably a part of when I was an offensive coordinator is, hey, I was a guy kind of running the show, but Urban would always have a bunch of little input. Hey, let's do this here. Let's do that here. Hey, let's run this play at this time. Hey, take a shot. Not not call this specific play. We we need to take a shot. Let's run the reverse right now. Let's uh, you have that great moment where you meld where you work together and can feed off of each other. Right. The, the other one, I had Brian Johnson, who's now the offense coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. And you look at the success he's had. But he and I the same way. There would never be fear. Brian would jump in and call. I'm calling plays. Brian would just start calling plays. And it wasn't an argument. It was I see this. Let's do it. And we would kind of feed off of each other. Right. And if if I if I said, let's run it. No, don't no, run this. I'd be like, all right, call. it. Or if he said something and I want to do something else. No, no, we're going to do this. Great. Call it. The key is with Bobby Petrino and Jimbo Fisher, what you want is the reality TV show of the actual headset recordings during a game. <laughs> okay. Because it's if they're meld on a really great level working together, I think it could be unbelievable because you have two great minds feeding off of right. each other. But it could be combustible. Uh, yeah, that's the key. If the system doesn't fit together and it's, Bobby wants to run these plays and Jimbo wants to run these plays over here. Now you're completely bipolar and it's a complete mess. Because I think, I think the thing, and, I, and I'm glad you brought up you and Urban and the difference, I, well, the difference between you and Urban at the time and the ascent of your career is you had yet to be a head coach. Yes. Urban was the rising star. And then you got into the rising star because with Tebow and you made, you designed that offense. What makes this interesting, even with Brian Johnson with you, Brian, it wasn't head coach. Hadn't been, yeah. What's interesting here is now you're talking about a former NFL head coach and an SEC head coach getting in with a head coach and Jimbo. Like that to me is what has this thing on the verge. If start adversely, I mean, they, they had 20% t- touchdown rate, whatever the stat was, it was lowest in the SEC last year. Yeah. N- now you've got this, which to your point, beautiful minds. It could be phenomenal. One thing goes wrong. Well, that, that, and that's going to be, that's what's going to be in is I, you, I think you're going to see by, you might not hear it, but you're going to see by body languages of each person. I imagine, I imagine Bobby will be upstairs in the box. I was just going to, okay. I, <laughs> you have to. I, I think there's <laughs> got to be. So at least it's only on the headset conversations right there. Right. Um, you know, because I mean, I think everybody remembers the the Nick and Lane on the sidelines. There you go. But that's an offensive and defensive guy. 
And now you have the both offensive guys, you know, of, of how to do it. And you, you have to have the relationship. When I first became a head coach and if I wasn't calling plays, I remember I'd be like an offense coordinator. It was Les Kenning upstairs and, and he'd call plays. And at the end of the series, I'd be like, is that the best three plays? If we went with three and out, is that, is that the best we have? Is that really the best three plays we could call? Like you're so almost condescending, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then when I started calling the plays, I would be like, boy, that was, as, that was bad. Like, I, but you're, you're saying it to yourself. <laughs> like you're right. not con, you're not a head coach yelling at somebody else. So the interesting one, right. Is the relationship of like urban and I, if he, if he got on me and I hadn't been a head coach yet, you're right. Exactly. He'd get on me and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to let him vent here for a couple seconds. And then let's get back to productive of what we need to do to, to fix it. And you know what the, that, that didn't go well, but what we saw in that, here's how we're going to set it up in the future. Right. Yeah. I think there's a lot to that of if the series go bad, is it Jimbo saying that's awful? I'm just going to call the plays, and you know, or you know, I, I've been on there. I, you hear if you could do a compilation of the best headsets things, it would be people would it would pay money for what I remember being up when I was a young assistant on the headset and, and the head coach. I won't get into all the specifics of people, not because it's I'll put it in the book maybe one day, but it's it's their story to tell. <laughs> It's like, that's awful. That place stinks. That's terrible. The head coach yelling up at the offensive coordinator. It's like, I, you know, you're lucky to have a job. Like, okay. And it, but it's, you know, it's now it's, it went from second and seven to third and 15, right? Crickets on the heads, third and 15. You know, crickets. Play clock's running down. Well, if you're so smart, you call the play then, coach. <laughs> Your job's to call the play. Call the play. Like I mean, you're like, oh my, like it is. Oh, and I that, mean, it and that, that's what I loved about doing the XFL this year is we did have patches into the headsets and it, it, look, <laughs> look. Then they knew that, but at the end of the day, there's still it, a time. Or two. Yeah, it's if good. you man, if you could get it, that would be amazing. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.